I V M. Hello and welcome to the Habit Coach Podcast. I am Ashton Doctor, your Habit Coach. And if you're a listener of this podcast, I know that you are on this journey of becoming the best version of yourself, constantly trying to improve, constantly trying to tweak your habits and become better and better. And that is why today we have an expert on understanding self-mastery, understanding how do we understand ourselves, how do we master ourselves so that we can keep growing at an incredible pace. So join me in welcoming Andrea Lowell onto the Habit Coach Podcast. Andrea, welcome to the Habit Coach Podcast. I am so excited to be here. It's an honor to be here. And I'm super excited for this conversation we're about to have, Ashton. So excited. Thank you so much. You know, when we think about self-mastery, like there are so many aspects of this. How did you start putting everything together? Where did you start this whole journey of self-mastery from? It's so funny. You know how they say you don't find your purpose, your purpose finds you. When I was young, 2003, 2004, I was probably 20, 21 or something like that. And I could not stop studying quantum theory. I couldn't stop studying like natural cures. I kept like studying things and focusing on things that really I couldn't figure out why I was so drawn to them. My friends were going out to, you know, drink and party. Don't get me wrong. I did go out and drink and party, but you know, the next day they're nursing a hangover and I'm over here, you know, reading books on quantum mechanics. And it wasn't until I had a true, I mean, true spiritual awakening in 2012 that I was able to see oh, that's why I had this yearning, this insatiable thirst and hunger for deeper truth. I was always drawn to ancient wisdom, ancient knowledge, the Vedas, like all of it. And I resonated with it so well. And it was a lonely journey because not a lot of people want to talk about that when they're, you know, in their college and party phase. And this was before Instagram and uh, <laughs> there just wasn't Can a whole share lot share what people. your spiritual awakening was? What, what happened? Sure. I was, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. So on paper, I had it all. I was a radio and a television host from an early age and I was miserable. I was jealous of everyone. Anything that was wrong in my life, I blamed you for. Um, If it wasn't my mom's fault, my boyfriend's fault, it was society's fault. Um, I just couldn't take any responsibility for the condition of my life being miserable. I was spiritually bankrupt. I was emotionally depraved and I was intellectually imbalanced. So my mind, body, spirit, Trinity was just all over the place. And I tried to fill that spiritual hole with shopping, drinking, eh, massages, personal training, like anything but the material that was missing, which was spirituality. You know, I grew up spiritual. And uh, when I went to college, I was a biology major and I was studying philosophy and this and that. And I actually lost my faith in school. Um, I was kind of taught that that was nonsensical and that hurt me, but I intellectualized my way out of it. And I didn't realize that I was missing something. And I was sitting in the makeup chair one day about to go on live television. And I just started crying. At this point in my life, I wasn't a really big crier. You know, I saw it as weak and, you know, I'm all in my ego. So I'm the strong one. And I just said to my, my makeup girl, she was so funny. She thought my hair was not up to snuff. She's like, oh my God, is it your hair? I'm like, no, 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 I wouldn't cry over hair. I said, I can't do this anymore. I cannot do this anymore. So in Japanese, they have a word called satori. It means instant awakening. I knew in that moment that I was lying to my soul. I knew in that moment I was betraying myself. I knew that it wasn't everyone else. It was really me. So I love this, um, this analogy where if I have one finger pointing out at everyone else, I have three fingers pointing back at me. That was the awakening I had in that makeup chair, you know, bright and early, 730 in the, you know, in the rising. And um, I never looked back. Two weeks later, the show was gone. I, I was done. I didn't want to work in entertainment anymore. I you didn't want to. Yeah, or I had no desire. I said, mm-hmm. 
in my to myself, I cannot keep discussing vapid issues. I have so much inside of me and so much that needs to be explored. And of course, there's financial insecurity that wants to keep you in these lower levels. And okay. I just said, I don't care. I'm going to pursue my passions. I'm going to follow these breadcrumbs that my higher power source, you know, who I choose to call source or the universe or the unified field was showing me. And I was one just eh, brushing them away. I finally decided to follow the actual path that was designed for me. And it's been bliss ever since. And that's how I found self-mastery. It wasn't a seminar I took. I didn't follow any specific guru, but there were people who were paramount in my awakening. Like I would listen to Dr. Wayne Dyer, all of his books on tape, just on loop in my car, kind of pushing my old ideas out and flooding my consciousness. All of them, yeah. Yes, with good Mm -hmm. ideas. Also, Deepak Chopra was huge in my awakening. Um, Mm -hmm. Really learning about, and I I respected him because, you know, he was a world-renowned endocrinologist and people don't necessarily know that. So when he would talk about biological function and hormones and all this stuff, I would eat it up. So I really spoke his language and I decided right then and there, I had to get rigorously honest with myself. Instead of saying, you did this to me, I had to say, what did I do that got me here? Why are my reactions so over the top? And why do I take everything personally? And uh, it was a tough pill to swallow, but it was the most glorious pill to swallow. So I haven't looked back. And it all started in that makeup chair. (laughs) I love your story and analogy because, you know, all the Zen stories talk about how the master takes a stick and whacks the disciple on the head with the stick and sudden realization takes place. And like you said, Satori, and that was the whacking of the stick on your head with in, in the makeup chair. I love that analogy. <laughs> like it was a it was like a brush on the on the eye. <laughs> <laughs> what got you enlightenment? Eyeshadow. Ah, all right. That's it. <laughs> well, you have an eyeshadow so story. Much. Love it. I okay, love so, it so 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 the self-mastery, you started down on this journey, right? And then how did you start helping people? Where did that happen? How did you start defining what self-mastery was? Did you create a you know curriculum? How did the, what was the next process? People started noticing something drastically different about me. Instead of going through life being a caricature of who I thought everyone wanted me to be, I started living authentically because I started to love myself. People actually started to respect me. And Everyone wanted to know what my secret was. Everyone wanted to know, oh, what supplements are you taking? What skin cream are you using? Oh, just what are you doing? Are you listening to certain binaural beats? What's happening here? And um, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of that involved too, but that's not all the above, but right. But what it is we know is I found inner peace. And when you, I just got chills when I said that, when you find serenity, I never knew what that word meant, Ashton until I found it. You know, I'd see it on commercials. People would talk about it. It's in song lyrics. I didn't know what it meant. It just sounded pretty. Once I go, oh my gosh, nothing can bother me. People really started to notice. So I started mentoring people just for fun and for free, as I call it, you know, just, I wanted to be of service. You know, when you have something inside of you, You just got to give it away. And as Wayne Dyer would say, don't die with your music inside of you. So I had this spiritual music inside of me and I just had to share it, you know, and I did that successfully for over 10 years and well, just about 10 years. And one of my friends was just like, you got to put this into a course and you got to start teaching people the blueprint. And I really created the blueprint for it. And discovered it actually was in complete alignment with self-mastery after studying Abraham Maslow, who's kind of the grandfather of self-actualization. That's exactly what I was doing. So kind of through trial and error, through using my friends and different girls that I coach almost as, you know, guinea pigs in this big experiment I'm running, what works, what doesn't, what they need to know, what is just superfluous information. Because, you know, I'm so rooted in quantum theory. So it's like, what do people really need to know? A lot of people don't want to go too deep into it. They don't have the patience for it or the desire. So I'm not going to force them to, right? But there are certain things we need to know if we want to understand this reality in which we live. And I don't want to use the word harness at all, but harmonize with it all. So that's how it all happened. And I 
you know, had a bunch of different careers while I was doing this personal trainer, nutritionist, da, 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 da. And I just decided, you know what, this is what I was put on earth to do. I get so much joy every time I help one of my clients. This is how I know it's my destiny. This is how I know I'm living in alignment with my dharma. That's so beautiful. Love the way that you shared this journey. And yet, what are aspects of the blueprint? Like, how did you structure it? So it starts with, well, it's a seven. So if I take you through the course, because that would be the blueprint. The first Mm -hmm. module, and it's it's a a module a week, and I don't let my clients skip ahead because you cannot and should not go to the next one until you are mastered. And of course, this includes one-on-one mentorship from me. So it's not something people can just do online on their own and think they got it. I make sure and I help them see their blind spots. The first module is going to be kind of overstanding that quantum reality, as I mentioned, getting to know the different frequencies, which ones we're emitting and how to stop emitting the lower ones. Also, we get into universal law, which I'm just a big fan of. And I really harp on karma. Karma is a a way that I've learned to manifest from everything we know is cause and effect. What you reap is what you sow. And there's a really negative kind of connotation with it. Pardon my French, but karma is a bitch. No, karma is beautiful if you are. Let's be real. And we get into a deep connection with a higher power source. It doesn't have to be mine. It just has to be something that's not between your ears. Anything but the mind. So once we get through that, then we get into our past. This is what people might call the shadow work or the core wounds. I don't have my can clients. I, can I just deep dive into the first one a little bit? Can you explain Absolutely. a little bit about the frequencies and, you know, just to give our listeners a little bit more understanding of, you know, what they can start thinking of right now and probably yes. start seeing it in their life. Yes. So as I'm sure you know, and your listeners know by this point in our lives, everything around us are frequencies. Everything is a vibration, even though it appears totally solid. Oh, it's just different levels and speeds of vibration. So if this illusory world around us, you know, is pretty much empty space between vibrations. I need to know what frequencies I'm sending out because through the law of karma, through the law of attraction, what I send out is also what I receive. And it usually comes back exponentially. So if I'm focusing on gratitude every day and not phoning it in, you know, but like really harnessing it from my heart and giving gratitude for things I'm truly grateful for, even if it's something seemingly benign as the sun on my skin or these cozy socks, but I really, really love it and mean it, I'm going to start to bolster that frequency. And then I can take that and amplify it and I'm shooting that out. If I have no awareness of this, I don't know what frequencies I'm sending out. I don't know the karmic effect of this. So everything in the universe is a wiggle and a wave of energy and intention. So knowing that it's not just simply energy, but there's an intention behind every resonation. That's what we need to know. Everything truly is intention, vibrating. Isn't that rad? Absolutely. You know, like when people say that, you know, feel the vibrations or, you know, good vibes, bad vibes. I think the way that you explained it right now, which is your intentions that what it is that you actually truly, truly want and the actions that you're willing to do for it or that you are doing for it. Both of these combine to create that energy, combine to create that vibration. You know, normally people just think that, oh, there are vibes around you. I have to get to a higher level. How do you get to a higher level? Intention and action. Love that breakup. Thank you. Yeah, you nailed it. I mean, your summary of my summary. (laughs) Excellent. (laughs) What I do for a living. Hey, (laughs) I love it. So after we go through kind of the basic training on what we just discussed, um, then we get into, like I mentioned, the shadow work, the core wounds. I don't have my clients physically relive it because then we're going to relive those frequencies, but we have to get real with it. I know when I first did this work, I thought, I don't have anything in my past. My childhood was lovely. I don't have any resentments. I don't harbor ill will toward anyone. Once I put pen to paper, I had pages. And what I had to do is I had to look at my life chronologically. And I had to say, what was the first memory of someone that really hurt me? And am I still holding on to that? And guess what? I was. So it's kind of bringing the unconscious to the conscious. And again, not reliving it. I have my clients write, not an essay. We're not journaling, just bullet points of what happened so that we know and have clarification. And then I have them look at how it truly affected them. Like I can think of something right now that happened to me in fifth grade that really affected my self-esteem. Am I carrying that on as an adult? 
yeah, I am. And guess what that's sending out? I'm not worth it vibrations. I'm not worthy. No wonder I can't manifest what I want. No wonder I don't have an abundant life. I don't believe I am because I haven't dealt with that pain. So we do all that. Then we move on to the third step, which is figuring out the character traits that we've devised from the work we just did as survival skills, coping skills. We can decide if we want to transmute any into assets, high vibe Mm -hmm. assets, or if we just need to get rid of them and turn them over to a power greater than (laughs) ourselves. truly. So that's really freeing for a lot of people, especially because some people, they always know they have one or two things that really, you know, I'm holding onto this, this really messed me up. But there's people like me that are in denial. I'm fine. What are you talking about? Everything's great. Well, guess what? If everything's great, why'd I have a breakdown in the makeup chair? And why am I putting pen to paper six pages later? (laughs) So after that, we get into the fourth part of this. So stage three is basically putting things into action, right? Yeah, Is that the way to do it? So getting rid of the junk, moving towards the good stuff is what stage three is about. That's right. And having no shame about it, being so happy that we got to this level of realization. Oh my God, you're telling me that I'm acting this way because I have an underlying fear? Whoa, whoa. That really tripped me up too when I realized every single character trait that was not serving my highest, when I deduced it all the way to the bottom, there was a fear lingering at the core. I would have paid you a million dollars. I would have bet you a million bucks. Said I don't have any. I'm not a fearful person. We talk, fears aren't ruling my life. Fears aren't making me act crazy. Oh yeah, they were. You know, I'll give you a funny example. So I kept getting mad at my husband for leaving the toilet seat up. Right, and it's really it's not a big deal. Like it's not. But after he did it a few times, and this is before I was embodied, right? <laughs> before I was self mastered, um, I would get crazy. How could you? You don't care about me. It's so simple. Just do it. First of all, what's the frequency I'm emitting, right? Desperation. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have a dream life when I'm desperate. I started to look at my actions. What is the underlying fear? It's that he doesn't respect me. It's that we're going to break up. We're going to get a divorce. Didn't match the toilet seat, obviously, but that's where I was. That fragile you know? And had I not looked like now, don't get me wrong. I'm far from perfect. Now, if I act a little bit out of, you know, character and I start acting in a low vibe way, I know exactly what the fear is and I can nip it in the bud. Anytime I get rude with him, I know it's because I have this fear that pops up sometimes that our relationship's not going to work. And that scares me, terrifies me. So I act out of character, but because I know it, we don't dwell in it. It's not a, I'm not talking to him for a week. Hey, babe, I'm having that low vibe fear again. I'm sorry. I'll try to make it better. (laughs) I mean, it turns into a really beautiful conversation because I know myself so intimately. And I think that's what we're missing in society nowadays, that intimate self-knowledge, or we don't understand what intimacy means. It's not I'm getting naked with you. It's I know everything about you and I love it and I honor it. And we got to do that with ourselves because how can I love you if I don't love me? How can I know you if I don't know me? So that's really what that work is about. And, and in fact, it's you know, these kind of conversations is weakening a relationship because you're like, oh my God, they know my secrets, they know my fears. But actually that works the opposite way because it actually creates that bond with you and yes. it, it deepens the relationship and you have these kinds of conversations with your partner. That's right. And if anyone, this is a public service announcement to the listeners, if anyone uses your fears or your wounds as weapons against you, run. They do not deserve you. They are manipulators and probably uh, slightly narcissistic. I have never had anyone turn my wounds around on me. And I'm so grateful that I have such unconditionally loving people in my life. But there's no way anyone could ever share a deep secret or a fear with me. And I would go and in turn use it against them. You know, that's when someone has no other argument. They're going to resort to that low hanging fruit. So people that want to do that, wipe your hands. Run. Right. Run, run, run and don't look back. <laughs> so after we've done this, we can really start to jump into module four, which is cultivating true self-worth. We do this by examining what exactly we value. 
What is my self-concept? Where does mm-hmm. my energetic currency go? Where should I be putting it? And we look at everything in the material field, including finances, um, and also where we derive really our sense of worth. And we start looking at what are my values? If I know what I value, then I have a much better idea of me. So that's really, really fun. And having uh, my clients discover their true self and their true self-concept is it's one of the joys of my life. We're going to take a quick break. See you on the other side. Hello, 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 everybody. It's been another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. On Pesa Vesa, Anupam talks to Vivek Rathi. He's the director of research at Knight Frank India. They discuss the increasing importance of real estate and the post-pandemic consumer choices. On Smarter with Sid, Sid explains the art of visualization. On Marathi Kirkitan, the Deshmukhs explain the importance of teachers in everyone's life. On Do What Floats Your Boat, Danish is joined by graffiti artist Zake. They talk about what led Zake to choosing street art as a profession. And on A Sip of Finance, Priyanka lists four reasons why we delay insurance and the solutions to overcome them. Once again, I'd like to remind you all that we've got some exciting merchandise out there for you guys. Go to the IBM Podcast website and click on the Shop tab and check out our first collection of t-shirts. Also, do follow us on social media. We're IBM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. We're also on YouTube. Do remember to check out a bunch of our channels over there. And also remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please Please tell a friend. Word of mouth is very, very helpful for spreading the word. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week, Boat Lifestyle, Small Case, Cap Gemini, and Intel V Pro. Thank you so much for making this possible. Welcome back. All right, let's jump into the conversation. Self-worth is a scary thing, right? Like, how do you put a, you know, we normally think of worth as a number. Right. So whenever you say self-worth, it almost feels like you to put a number on yourself. Like, this is what I'm worth. But that's mm. not actually what it is about, right? So when you talk about self-worth, do you feel a little resistance from from some of your clients? Like, what would they normally be worried about? Yeah, they've never felt self worth. You know, they thought it was having an expensive handbag, or I've had a long term relationship. You know, I have a I have a good job. That's not it at all. Those are cool things for your resume, right? So it's really the misunderstanding, and they are afraid. This is typically the most resistance I get. And then at the end of it, when we literally do the work, pen to paper, have the conversations, they're like, oh, that's self-worth. So like you said, it's not I'm worthy of a billion dollars. It's I'm worthy of unconditional love. I'm worthy of instilling boundaries. I'm worthy of friendships that are reciprocal, right? Like, so it's not about the monetary. It's not about the number. It's about what I deserve as a human being. Now, we cannot get self-esteem though if we haven't taken esteemed acts. So when we do this work, my clients start to feel really, really good about themselves and they feel really, really clear. And they kind of get like me when I first started where I just want to shout from the rooftops and give it away for free. And they start to feel really good about themselves and they start cultivating true self-worth, true self-esteem. And through that, they devise their self-concept, which is really just What do I think about myself? And when someone says like, who are you, Andrea? I don't say I'm a self-mastery coach. I say I'm an honest person. I'm a loving person. I'm a good listener. That's who I am. That's my self-concept. It's not what I do for a living. It's how do I show up? So I think that's where we need to start changing the conversation about self-worth. Absolutely. I'm not a brand manager in a XYZ business. I am this, like you said, I'm an honest person or I'm a you know, loving father, whichever way that you identify at, at that right. point of time, right? Right. And once you know what you value, then it's really easy to identify who you are. Okay. So it's really, really cool. So now after we've done all this work, Ashton, now it's like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm ready to manifest. Ooh, so nice. all right. <laughs> I'm ready to manifest. And I do high level techniques. And I know we'll talk about that another time. And um, you tell me, it's not vision boards and things like that. It's literally manifesting from the heart space and really by harmonizing the frequencies and becoming that clear channel for our higher power source to work through for us to connect with the unified field in a really graceful, beautiful way without the karmic crud or residue that clings to us. We've shed that, we've released that. And because we're walking hand in hand with our higher power source and being of service, we're not accumulating more karmic 
crud and karmic residue <laughs> where it cl- it's like a clean pipe and like, you know, sources, the it's water flowing just through. flowing through. Yes, <laughs> totally. So then I teach abundance. And again, like you said about the self-worth, people just think abundance is cash, money. No, I'm talking an abundance of love, an abundance of joy, an abundance of serenity, an abundance of wellness. So really whatever the client wants, we can achieve that. And of course, I I teach prosperity and wellness as well, (laughs) as well as, you know, unlocking your purpose and things like that. And that's all going to be under abundance. And then finally, I teach integration. How do I continually and perpetually walk this walk? The last thing I want is a bunch of people just regurgitating the information that I've, I've taught them. I want them to truly be embodied. I want people to look at them and say, what's their secret? What does she have? Did she get a handbook on how to do life that I didn't get? What's happening over there? So that literally our aura, our energy, our vibration speaks for us. And uh, that's what I do. Wow. So interesting. So, you know, I love the way that you've structured this whole thing out, getting rid of the past, understanding what it is that you actually want, putting in that action, because without that action, nothing takes place. That's right. Understanding what are the things that are holding you back, your manifestation piece. You know, normally when people talk about manifestation, like you said, it is about what I'm, you know, I'm going by this date, I will get this. But Correct me if I'm wrong, but what you said about manifestation is I'm going to get out of the way and see things happen, right? I'm going to yes. like get out of my own, stop tripping over my own shoelaces, basically. So I'm, I'm going to allow for whatever's coming to come. But because I have a direction now, I know where it's flowing towards. Is that the, did I get that right? That's exactly right. So don't get me wrong. I could definitely manifest something tomorrow. If I wrote down, I'm going to get a text message from Ashton tomorrow by 7 p.m. It is done. Thank you, universe, whatever. I know I could manifest that. But what if the universe had something so much more grand for me, but my will, my ego is telling it what to do, where you were actually going to send me a huge bouquet of flowers. You know what I mean? And maybe a singing telegram. And you sent it for a text message, yeah. Right. And it had to be tomorrow. But had I waited for the universal intelligence to do its perfect magic that it always does, because it always delights and surprises me. It always blows my mind. If I just practice that divine patience and don't get rigid on dollar signs, dates, amounts, and this, I can actually create something that is going to be miraculous. So I don't limit myself. I don't teach manifestations like that. I use gratitude as our superpower. And I always, you know, teach manifesting in a general, generally vague way. I know what I want, but I'm going to allow this greater <laughs> knowledge, this infinite intelligence to really put the puzzle pieces together, do the heavy lifting for me, and really knock my socks off with something that my small mind could never even conceive. Let's be real. <laughs> That's how it you works. You know, this reminds me of a video I saw yesterday of um, Sadhguru. And um, Sadhguru said something interesting. He said that, you know, prayers are stupid. Because every time you say a prayer and ask for something, you're basically telling God or whichever higher being what he should be doing. And he's like, why are you telling God what he should be doing? But like, he already knows what he should be doing, right? There is a scheme to things. And every time you ask, for something in that fashion, you're basically giving an instruction and technically you should, and he was equating it with meditation. He's like, technically just sit down, meditate and receive what comes. So I I love that analogy. And I'd love to add this to that. So I'm going to give you an example of me asking rather than me professing gratitude and slash knowing. Dear God, please help me. Please get me to the next level in my career please, please, please get me an interview with the boss tomorrow. Please, I need this raise so bad. You know how bad I need it. Please, I love you. You're the best. Thank you. Like, please, God, please do this for me. That is desperation. Remember, we talked about frequencies. I am shooting out desperation. That doesn't mean God doesn't answer prayers, right? But what that means is I'm going to get a wonky result because my mind is shooting out one intention, but the frequency I'm shooting out through that spoken word, the action, is all kinds of self-doubt, 
negation of the miracle I'm trying to call in and that frequency of, I don't have it. I'm not worthy. I can't do this. Instead of, I know it's coming. Thank you, God. I cannot wait for you to show me what opportunity you have around the corner. So what I do is I say, you know, thank you for perpetually showing me the doors to walk through because guess what? My higher power knows I'll walk through the door, right? Because willingness is the secret sauce of manifestation. Like you said, action. I can't take action if I'm not willing, right? Mm -hmm. So I always say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for these myriad of opportunities and these multiple vortices of effortless income coming my way. Thank you for showing me the door to walk through. You know, I will walk through it with effortless ease because you deliver. And I'm so grateful for all the prior manifestations and miracles you've brought into my life. Literally, I'm so jazzed up with gratitude and knowing right now, just by changing the words and my intention and my knowing. So I don't believe in God. I know God. And self-mastery truly is living from the divine. It's not living from the head. It's not hoping and praying and wishing. And a lot of times we can't know God until we surrender to God and get out of the way. So someone who's not self-mastered will always get in the way because they Mm -hmm. think that their mind and their ego is the ultimate. And guess what? That's just not the case. Uh, We are just an expression of that infinite, you know, source um, having fun out here. I'm not the ultimate. (laughs) I'm in a skin suit. I'm pretty limited here. (laughs) Absolutely. And guys, this was a masterclass in changing your vibrations. Okay. So like if you heard Andrea right now and you could see that change, how many of us are actually living in that low state of vibration? Oh, you know, God, please give me that job. I don't think I deserve it. I know I've not really done well in the last one, but please, you know, if you do this, I will try. Where is your level? And then when there's that abundance and you could hear it in her voice, that is the true way of understanding vibrations and, you know, intention behind it and the action right there. That's right. That's all it is. You nailed it. And People want to overcomplicate the whole thing. I guarantee you it's so brain dead simple. It is so simple. Nothing I teach is complicated because guess what? Complicated is not sustainable. I'm not going to tell my clients, wait for a, you know, strawberry full moon, bust out four feathers and two crystals, and then you're going to make seven circles, you know, and (laughs) no, it's literally raise your vibration daily. Your homework is gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. It's catching yourself, spot checking, identifying when those lower frequencies are trying to come back out. And we're going to turn them over to that power greater than ourself. We're going to continually clean it up, clear the residue, clear the, it's so simple. Like if this was challenging, none of my clients would be successful and I have a 100% success rate. So that speaks for itself. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Andrea, this was absolutely fantastic. I can't wait for our next conversation about the ego and understanding that. I I know that you have different steps on it. Andrea, how can people get in touch with you and take this conversation forward with you? Well, I am always on my Instagram. So at the I Am Everything Project on Instagram is really the best way to get a hold of me because I answer my own DMs. And the link tree in my bio actually has an opportunity for people to book one-on-one sessions with me. Also get a bunch of my freebies like my how to raise your vibration guide, unlocking your purpose, and also how to learn more about the I Am Everything Project, which is the one-on-one private mentorship program that I offer. Fantastic. All right. Super. Andrea, looking forward to our next podcast together. Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait. Now, if you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IBM network. You can listen to us on the IBM podcast app or ibmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media. We are at IBM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to reach out to me, I am at Ashton Doc on Twitter and Instagram. We have a brand new habit coaching online course, quizzes, videos, and a lot more on the website awesome180.com. So check it out now. Hello there, this is Danish Said and I'm hosting a new podcast called Do What Floats Your Boat by Boat Lifestyle where I explore the alternative lives of a new India. Every Thursday, I'm talking to people who follow their dreams even if they're unconventional and they've managed to build a community for like-minded people. We speak with trendsetters like Ruhi Dosani, Shantanu Maheshwari, Mithpat and even Aman Gupta. 
Tune in to new episodes on the IBM Podcast app and website, the Boat YouTube channel, or actually wherever you get your podcasts from. अगर अपना तो राहुल से फोटो बगीचे इसका फेसबुक पर से ती प्रिया मने अता मॉडलिंग में दे करियर करना रे तू कशिक आएगा इतकी छान गाड़ी चालोते हैं दोन वर्षों जाली माज़ा प्रमोशन अड़कले अने लोग का मंटा बाइक का ना काय प्रमोशन मिलता हैं यहाँ अने अशा चिक्कार विषयन वर अमी मारना रहो दिल खुलास गप्पा अने यहाँ गप्पा अशना रे टोटल रिस्ट्रिक्शन फ्री मैं अपरना दीक्षित मैं क्लिनिकल साइकोलॉजिस्ट आहे अने मैं अवंती दामले मैं स्पोर्ट्स न्यूट्रिशनिस्ट है तर अमचा गप्पा एकायला ट्यून इन करा आईवीएम ऐप वेबसाइट अने अन्य पॉडकास्टिंग प्लेटफॉर्म्स वर दर बुधवारी दोन बाइका गप्पा एका